Arr, pirate fans, it's time to find out the state of the ship of your defending champions for the 2022 season with your hosts, Johnny Wolver and Jake Ignazuski. And now, brought to you by Resonate, it's the state of the ship. It's time again, once again, for the state of the ship, the Massachusetts Pirates ship, and it is floating high in the sea right now, thanks to Resonate and uh, bringing us uh, the state of the ship here again this week. Jake Ignazuski on the road last week, your first road trip with the team. First of all, um, strip joints and all that, how did it go? No, I'm just <laughs> kidding. Uh, great game. First of all, great win. Um, talk a little bit about what it was like to, to travel with the team. It was, uh, they get another win, 4-0, uh, 3-0, getting ready to try and start for 4-0, I hope that this Blizzard game isn't a trap game. Me as well, and you know, I, I feel like you, you you could have said the same thing about about this past week as well. But you you know, you saw us Pirates go out, get their third win of the season, extend that winning streak to 14 games. Did you get involved and in the game? I did get involved in the game actually, <laughs> and you you know, it was funny. Uh, you know, we can insert the clip, and uh, I I I was you know standing there filming. You know, drove through through a pass to Darren Carrington. Carrington flipped over flipped over the uh, wall, and you know, I was so focused focused on filming it, getting the shot, doing everything I could to get the shot. Doing the job. And, uh, exactly. And, you know, I, I got hit in the face. Luckily, face is still pretty as always. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, it, it definitely was a nice inter- introduction to uh, the indoor football. Great uh, great way to, to end the, you know, the road trip, the first week, uh, the first road trip of the season. And really, uh, it was a good win. A little bit uh, shaky there in the second half. Um, I'm afraid that the, the defense just kind of you know got on their heels a little bit and and really uh, allowed that team uh, to get back into it. North Dakota really shouldn't have been there in the fourth. Yeah, completely agree. And you know it was sort of like a back and forth offensive showdown. And you know leading up to it, we talked about this. We, we kind of expected that a little bit, uh, especially you know with uh, the Bucks having the third ranked uh, offense is and you know the Pirates having the fourth ranked offense um, in, the, in the league. And so, you know, we saw Drew, uh, the, the quarterback for the Bucks, really do a good job of keeping the uh, Bismarck in the game. And, you know, it was just back and forth. It seemed like any time Massachusetts scored, the Bucks were right there to, you know, tie up the game or bring it as close as they could. Yeah, and, you know, offensively, you couldn't have asked for a better performance out of the Pirates. Uh, Drew, uh, offensive player of the week, and, you know, six touchdowns really just spread the ball around, too. That was what was nice to see. Because the week before, you hit T.O. a couple times, but it was really nice to see you hit, like, five different receivers uh, for those touchdowns. Very true. You, you know, we saw him throw two to Isaac Zico, one to Thomas Owens, Darren Carrington, uh, Dantes Bird, and then also Corey Dauphine, the running back who made his first start with the Pirates, got his first touchdown down in IFL action and with the Pirates as well. Uh, So it was really cool to see him get in on the action. Unfortunately, during the game, he got injured. Uh, But, you know, it it was really nice to talk to him, especially after the game, and get his whole reaction on, you know, being back in football. Because, you know, as we talked about when when he first signed with the team, you know, he was coming back from an Achilles injury. And so, you know, he's a guy who's so excited to get back on the field and what a better way to start off his career with the Pirates. Not only that, then Camacho comes in uh, late there in the fourth and, and really, you know, sealed the deal before the interception uh, really you know put the icing on top of the cake very true you know we, we saw jimmy go up there kick a 55 yard field goal and all i could think about was last year in arizona you know and that pressure of that type of game and, and to see jimmy go up there and just really nail it and he had, had a rough night right. he missed uh, i think three field goals before that you know so it, it was questionable and it was a it was a long field goal and you know he's able to put it right through the uprights oh very no true. he hit it off the left side Yep, came right up off the left side of it. Yeah, it was it was nice to see him get that, and you know, it put a little bit more of a cushion for the Pirates. You know, it, it was a little bit of a nail biter there yeah. at the end of the fourth. You know, it was forty five to forty three, but you know, Camacho's uh, field goal ultimately helped it the Pirates have a little bit of breathing room and you know as you mentioned then we saw you know the the Bucks get one more opportunity to creep back up in this game and we saw Lucas Dennis also making his first start with the Pirates and in the IFL get a pick six and you know it was really cool to see a guy who's not only a Massachusetts native but also a Boston College alum uh, be able to help seal the game for the Pirates. Yeah and that was a big pick six too and, and Huge. able to bring it back and just that, that you could tell everybody just kind of you know breathed a sigh of relief after that and uh, you knew we had it in the bag three in a row to start the season 14 straight leading back to last year in the ifl uh, bowl uh, and the united bowl win 
I got to say, Jake, I hope that this week going out to uh, Green Bay in the blizzard, um, knowing that the blizzard, you know, a 12th in offense, 13th in defense, the, the Pirates can't sleep on this team. Uh, they, they can be sneaky and, and they can bring it. So they have to go out there and, and know that, again, you know, you're on a business trip and, and time to get the job done, come home with another win. Very true. And, you know, we saw in this past week's game against the Frisco Fighters, they, they really brought it down to a very close game with, with the clock ticking uh, there in the fourth quarter. You know, they came back from a 14 point deficit. And, you know, it, it was it was really interesting to see sort of uh, like a preview of what we could potentially see this upcoming Saturday. And it was early, it was all late points. It was, you know, they didn't score in the first quarter of that game. In the second quarter, there was not, I mean, maybe I think one or one or two scores on each side. But, you know, really a lot of the late scoring game uh, for last week against uh, Frisco in the blizzard. Very true. And, you know, sort of looking at uh, the Pirates' history against the Blizzard, they've split sort of, I guess you could say, the uh, the the time that they've played each other. It's usually called season series when, once they put, once, uh, you know, away. Right, exactly. You're, you're talking about it. But, uh, you know, it's interesting because they, they lost the last time that they were in Green Bay, but Drew also won the player of the week that last year uh, in Green Bay. And so, you know, I asked him a little bit, how are you looking to replicate sort of like not only what you did back in Green Bay, but what you did just a few days ago uh, in Bismarck. And, you know, he obviously mentioned, you know, me, me and Coach Stout as well as the receivers have been really working hard to figure out what went well last week and then just doing their best to implement that sort of stuff into the game plan for against the Blizzard. All of these touchdowns by way of the air. Uh, Drew uh, ran one in that got called back. Not much of a running game again last week. Uh, that's something I think the Pirates are really maybe can get going this week against the Blizzard. True. You know, it will be really interesting to see sort of how how they really maneuver in, in that unit. You, you know, we, we've we've seen Martez Carter get some touches. As I mentioned, Corey Delphine uh, re recently got injured. Luckily, they signed a wide receiver and running back in Dietrich Thomas, a, a guy who at Mississippi State back in 2019 actually led the team or was among the leaders in uh, receiving yards as well as touchdowns. So, you know, he's, he's a guy who also has experience, as I mentioned, wide receiver, running back, but also also has experience uh, as a kick and punt returner, so he's a very versatile weapon. Now, as we get into uh, kind of the meat of the season, um, signings all the time. Somebody's coming in, somebody's going out. We're always trying to improve the team. We brought in a couple new guys this week. Very true. You, you know, starting off with, uh, you know, Titus Davis. He's a guy who we saw play uh, this past Sunday, you know, <laughs> made, made some impact plays. And just played Sunday. He was, he was banging nails on Thursday and then got on the football field on Sunday. I know you got a big, uh, big interview uh, coming up with that big feature on Titus coming up, too. It, it's, it's an interesting story. I asked him a little bit about it uh, when we were in the airport on our way to Bismarck. And, uh, you know, he mentioned that, you know, he was doing construction work on Thursday. And then, and then he got a call from Coach Geyser seeing if there was a way that he could – you know, help out the Pirates on Sunday. And, you know, then, then he made his way to Massachusetts, practice with the team prior to leaving to Bismarck. And we, we saw him made some, make some impact plays against the Bucks in this last game. And uh, as, as well as the Pirates uh, signed offensive lineman Devera uh, Gillington uh, just right before they went to Bismarck. And, um, you know, we didn't see him play, play in the action uh, in, in the last game, but, you know, we could definitely see him this upcoming week. One other person that the Pirates recently signed his defensive back Reggie Floyd. He's he's a guy who just last year was playing with the Tennessee Titans in the NFL uh, during preseason action. Also was uh, signed as an undrafted free agent by the Arizona Cardinals. So he he has some very high class professional experience. Also has experience playing in the CFL. And uh, you know he's a guy who we saw his time at Virginia Tech really was an impact player. And you know it really shows on his resume what he'd be bringing to the Pirates defense. Continue to bring in talent. Jake, as the uh, Pirates insider, uh, do you feel like you're starting to uh, get embedded in the team, traveling with them? And, and you know, I, you hear a lot of the uh, commentators, of course, play-by-play -play guys uh, that get to travel with the team, Joe Castiglione and, and Will Fleming, uh, that talk about the fact that, you know, being around the team so much uh, is really where you get all that information. Are, are you starting to feel that way? Are you starting to feel the team's getting comfortable with you so that you can bring us back secrets here to the podcast? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been nice 
not only getting to know the guys, but being being able to sort of show them the content that I've been making them for them, and you know, uh, not not only you know covering the team, it, it makes it makes it a lot more fun when you when, you, when you're able to uh, you know get a little bit personal with the guys, get to know them as people outside of the game of football. Um, and, and, you know, it's, especially with the people that I, everybody that I've been able to catch up with, get to know, um, it, it really shows how good the chemistry is with this current team. And you know, I I, I think it really shows. Uh, on the on-field play so far in the past three games. This Saturday, April 16th, uh, in Green Bay. When does the team fly out on Friday? Friday. Ready to go. So you'll be, uh, by the time you're watching this, the team will be uh, ready to go out and and flying on their way out and uh, getting ready for uh, Saturday's game. Make sure you tune in on IFL TV and always uh, watching the the team on the road and get your gear right at MassPiratesFootball.com. Look at this. You can get a mug. You can have your number one finger and your thunder sticks and all the uh, Mass Pirates football gear too. And you can look like Jake over here, nice and dapper with the nice pirate shirt. Oh, yeah, me too. (laughs) <laughs> there you go. Go over and check it out. That's my Mass Pirates Football dot shop. You can also get it on the MassPiratesFootball.com. And also, while you're there on the website, go over and get yourself some tickets. They're also on sale on Ticketmaster as well. The Pirates will be back in Worcester against the Iowa Barnstormers just right after they finish their game uh, against the Blizzard that next Saturday. So make sure you go over and check those out. But we greatly appreciate everybody tuning in to this episode of the State of the Pirates ship if you have not yet make sure to subscribe on whatever audio platform that you're listening to as well as youtube we also post the video version over there greatly appreciate everybody tuning in if you want to hear all the updates on the massachusetts powers throughout the 2022 season this is the place to get it so we so we greatly appreciate it we'll see you guys next week